Next, we are going to see the contents of uh, firewall security policy and application. So this is what we have just now, the security policy matching. So as mentioned just now, every sort of data packet that passed through the firewall for the first time, they are going to match with our security policy. If you do not actually match with any sort of security policy, then uh, the action of the default policy it will be denied. Okay, so what you can see over here is actually the process of the secret policy for the any sort of uh, matchings for the data traffic. First of all, when the traffic comes into the secret policy, secret policy will be able to filter them including uh, in according to the conditions or parameters, then following by the actions. Subsequently, we will actually have our actions. And we will also, in extra, has the profile to be counter-checked. So in, under the conditions, the firewall will be able to uh, check according to these zones, the addresses or regions, users, service applications, and schedules. So then actions will basically just to permit or deny and the response basically just follow to the actions if we actually have the extra features enable example antivirus intrusion preventions or filterings of url uh, any sort of applications so control and some other features then this particular profile will be also uh, aiding the security matching as uh, the policy matching process. So if we are going to compare this to our uh, traditional security policy, the current security policy on the firewall can actually easily differentiate between the uh, reliable and the unreliable zones. So apart from the zone, even the user from the internal also can be classified as what you can see over here example that the user itself might actually come from the uh, marketing department and there are a specific application that this particular user can use or cannot use okay so you can see it's actually a uh, different uh, between the legacy or traditional firewall and the firewall that we have nowadays and you, we also can see that for a particular user from the R&D department if let's say this user is trying to access the HTTP applications then the action is permitted so but this is what we have over here with uh, the current firewall is what you also call it as the next generation's firewall okay so the next part you see over here is actually on how we can actually configure security zones using the Huawei Firewall web interface. Now, firstly, when we go into the firewall, we actually can observe that on the tab or the menu on top. So there's a list of icons. So we actually need to uh, go into the object icons subsequently on the left side after you click you will be able to see a zone now in Huawei the zone itself is divided into uh, four zones namely the uh, local zones the trust zones and trust zones and DMZ so based on the uh, trustworthy of the zone or area of network we basically can add our interface into the zone then after you add the uh, zone the next thing is our security policy which is used to define the uh, traffic flow through the uh, firewall so the matching condition as mentioned early on including the zones the addresses the region the user applications or schedules and based on that, we can actually allow or deny the traffic. 
And the additionals of this security policy is that we can also integrate together with extra uh, features such as profile, the antivirus, the uh, IPS, the intrusion prevention systems, the UR filtering, the application control, so far and so forth. Now what you see now is the uh, configuring the address or even address group on the web UI. Now when we talk about addresses over here, it is not only referring to the IPv4 address. It also includes the IPv6 as well as the MAC address. So in order for us to configure the web UI for the address and address, under the same icons of the object icons, we actually need to go into the uh, address, which fall under the address. Okay, then from here, we actually can choose between address or address group. Now address, which means uh, distinct single addresses, but address group is actually a range of uh, network address. Apart from address, we also can uh, configure regions. And region group okay so it's pretty much the same it's just that now we have just have to go into the region tab okay and add our uh, regions okay now region over here is mentioned by uh, country so basically you can filter based on the uh, geographical location as well then uh, we can also configure the services and service group Okay, so services will be uh, a distinct different services, while the service group will be a group of uh, services, okay, as well as the uh, specific uh, protocol application that we're going to use. Okay, so over here, the services itself also defined into two different types. Firstly, it's predefined service. Next is the user defined service. Predefined service usually involve the uh, well-known ports or well-known services. Well, user-defined service is uh, any sort of customized uh, service by the user. To do this, we basically need to do the same thing, go into the object icons. Next, look for the service. Then from here, we can actually add our service. For the application as well, will be pretty much the same. Okay, then um, for the applications under the object, go into our applications. Then we have to add our applications. Then schedules. Schedule will actually tell about the uh, time range whereby the firewall can be referred. Okay, so during the schedules or during the time range, the power will be effective to certain policy. Uh, and uh, if out of the time range, the power itself might not actually need to be a filter against or uh, uh, to those different types of data traffic. This is something that uh, very useful, especially for those uh, enterprise that wish to uh, control their user behavior during the working hour. To do this, we go into the web UI, select the object icons. Then under the object icon, on the left pane, we are going to choose schedules. Then we can add our schedule list. Okay, and customize according to the needs. What you see next over here is the uh, security policy. So if we actually going to configure a security policy under the web UI, on the icon just now, we, uh, we are going to go for another icon, which is called policy. So under the policy, we're going to choose security policy on the left plane. Then we're going to add a new security policy. So what you can see over here now is to create a security policy. So as mentioned, security policy, uh, basically we have uh, a list of uh, parameters for us to filter. Okay. So firstly, we have to need, uh, configure the name, 
of the security policy, the descriptions whereby um, is something optional to describe about your security policy. Then policy group if we have, okay. Then followed by the tag. Then followed by zones, regions, the user, the access mode, the device, the service applications, the category of URL as well as the schedules. Okay, so what can you see over here is actually the example of configuring a security policy. So this is just um, giving you an idea on how we can configure a security policy. Now, in this example, it says on an enterprise network, PC in the 192.168.5.0 slash 24 network segment are allowed to access the internet. But PC at 192.168.5.2.5.3 and .5.6 are not allowed to access the internet. So which means that there are three PC they are not allowed to access the internet. But apart from this three, the rest able to access to the internet. So in this case, we actually need to come up with our security policy. Okay, and since the given con the given scenario is actually uh, something to do with the IP, so we might actually need to filter with IP as well. After that, we are going to configure uh, our uh, security policy according to the uh, behavior that's required. Okay. Now this is what we can see over here. So the root map of our uh, configurations for the security policy. Firstly, we are going to start with the um, security zones. Then uh, the security zone will be uh, placed together with the interfaces. And after we configure the security zone with interfaces, next we can also configure the uh, user and authentications it, but it will depends on our case over here. So our case is more to configure based on the IP. So this could be optional. So anything that you can see is uh, highlighted in the deep blue color box are the mandatory. While uh, any in the pale blue box will be optional. Example, user authentications. The object, which referring to the services, addresses, uh, applications, regions, uh, those are optional. So since we are going to use the uh, address to distinguish between the user in the networks, whether they can access internet, so object will be used. Next, we also can have uh, profiles. It depends if whether uh, is it required when uh, for the user that access to the internet. So it is also optional. Next, we should actually configure the security policy, okay, as this is a mandatory. And then we can actually save and click on this commit buttons in order for the uh, security policy to take effect. So what you can see over here is actually how the um, security policy is being configured using commands. So firstly, you can see that um, a security policy has to be created under the uh, system view, security policy, followed by the rule name, okay, the name of the rule. Then under the name of the rule, we are going to actually create the uh, parameters, whether is it by zones as well as the addresses, then followed by the actions. So this is example on how you can actually see. Then uh, this is for the uh, denied IP and the subsequent command that you see is pretty much the same. And this is actually for the uh, allowed PCs. The same thing that you can do in the web UI pretty much is under the address group. If you still remember, address group is under the object icons and you just need to browse to address. Under the address there, you have address group. So you just basically need to add 
an address group. So you can actually name the your address group and put the range of IP into it. Okay, so for the address group or list of address that you have created just now, you are going to put them under the script policy that we see early on. Then we also can define the uh, actions, setting the actions to deny. For the um, security policy, they actually go into the permit. Example, uh, any other PC apart from the three mentioned PC will be a permit. So this is what we can do. So this is actually pretty much the same as what you can see in the command early on. Okay, so now we come into the uh, final parts of our topics, the uh, application specific packet filtering. ASPF. Now, this particular ASPF is actually a feature that is designed for multi channel protocol technology. Okay, now, so before we understand ASPF, let's see what is this single channel or multi channel protocol. For single channel protocol, we are actually referring to any sort of application services that uses only one port during the communications. In this case, we actually has the uh, www, the web service, which is only using uh, port 80 during the communications. For the multi-channel protocol, we are going to use two or more ports for the communication. Example that uh, I mentioned early on, the FTP process, where you actually have the control channel as well as the data channel where both the channels are going to use different ports. So, uh, apart from FTP, there's a lot of uh, multi-channel protocol as well. Examples such as some multimedia application protocol, um, H.323, or even the SIP protocol, SIP. Okay, then this multi-channel protocol will actually has the uh, different ports than the initial uh, port that you use for the uh, establishing the uh, connections, the communication connections. Okay, so for any sort of protocol that use the uh, different ports, then this norm, uh, our normal traditional packet filtering will not be able to uh, identify the uh, data flow. So therefore, we have our ASPF. So ASPF is actually specially designed uh, for the uh, firewall to check the uh, packets in the data flow. This is for the effort to make sure that the packet status as well as the data packet itself is actually conformed to the um, security policy that we have created in the firewall. So by using the uh, ASPF, the firewall will be able to intelligently permit or deny the packets based on the information scattered. So, example, for the TCP connections, the ASPF can use to detect the two-way handshakes. Then, after the two-way handshake is detected, the um, payload will also be examined as well. So any sort of packet that have an incomplete uh, TCP handshake connections or error in states will be rejected. For UDP, basically, uh, is a, UDP is a con connectionless protocol. So we actually have uh, no ASPF for the UDP connections. So in this case, uh, ASPF, you're going to check the source IP extension IP as well as the UDP port number and will determine whether this packet is the similar as any sort of UDP packet received by the firewall in the uh, specific period of time. Then um, this particular ASP app also used to uh, monitor the random ports that used by different applications connections and then establish a proper data traffic to uh, control or to, uh, to allow or disallow the traffic flow. 
So in this way, the firewall can actually uh, identify the access of applications using different spots. So this is what you can see, the example of the uh, multi-channel protocols using the FTP. So um, the control channel and data channel, the two channels that I mentioned just now, so they are actually using different ports. So just now, under the um, previous slide, you actually see that a server map table is generated. So this server map table is only generated under uh, four different conditions. Firstly, server map will be generated based on the multi-channel protocol when you uh, enable with ASPF. If we never enable the uh, ASPF, then any sort of multi-channel protocol applications will be denied. Next, um, a static generate a static server map will be generated when we actually have a net server mapping, or you call it as the um, port forwarding. Then we also will generate a triplet server map when you actually have anything to do with the stun protocols, the simple transversal of UDP, okay, through net. That's as well as the dynamic server map where we generate when you actually using the uh, network address translations with without the uh, port address translations. Okay, so this is the generations of our uh, server map. Okay, then uh, for the multi-channel protocol itself, we also uh, support the port identifications. Port identification, or we also call it as the port mapping, is actually a feature that we can enable in firewall in order for us to um, identify the application layer protocol packets that using uh, non-standard ports, okay, the port that's not defined. So the port mapping will be able to support uh, many protocols such as FTP, HTTP, um, SMTP, so far so forth. And this particular port mapping, as what you can see over here, is configured by using uh, ACL. Okay, then uh, port identifications will be using the mapping between the uh, ports of well known ports together with the uh, ACL that we created. Early on. So with this, the, map, uh, the mapping of the port can be done. So the next feature over here is the uh, fragment cache. So fragment cache function is actually a, a function that used to cache fragment that arrive before the first fragment in the flow. Usually this uh, scenario we will get we will be able to see whenever um, if the MTU configured on the device the MTU value is smaller than the packet that come into the device so in this case the packet will be bigger than the MTU value configured by the receiving device and if let's say the receiving device is a firewall in our case over here so the packet that will be that that going to be transmitted will be fragmented into smaller fragments before they're sent to the uh, firewall. So uh, for all these fragmented small packets, when they are transmitted to the across the firewall, firstly, they actually need to make sure themselves uh, come in the fixed order. However, in the actual scenario, in actual uh, transmissions, the fragments of packets might not be coming in order. If let's say firewall receive a fragment, which is not the first fragment or not following the orders, then the firewall will discard those uh, fragmented packets. So in order for us, uh, for us to identify, sorry, uh, in order for us to make sure that 
the flow of the uh, uh, fragments. Therefore, we have to make sure that the uh, firewall enable the fragment cache functions. When we actually have the fragment cache functions, um, whenever the fragment that comes to the firewall is not the first fragment, it doesn't matter because uh, firewall will actually cache these fragments. Okay, then when only the first fragment arrives, then the file will create a session. Subsequently, any sort of uh, pre-cache fragment will be forwarded as well. Okay, then uh, another feature that's very useful over here is called the persistence connections. Now, a uh, persistence connection is something that uh, we can configure. It. Okay, so why actually we need this particular persistent connections? Uh, basically, uh, for the for the session table that we mentioned just now, any sort of data traffic uh, that pass the firewall, they are going to create the sessions. And this particular session uh, that's created, they actually will have a limited uh, time. So for the particular uh, limited time, of a session to stay in the table, sometimes it's not suitable for any sort of big data traffic. So that might require a longer uh, session's time. So with that, we can actually uh, configure the uh, longer sessions, okay, by using the command called uh, long link. Okay, so using this particular long link command, we can actually change the aging time of our sessions inside the session tables. So this will actually uh, able to solve some issue uh, for some sp special services. Okay, so we have our small uh, quiz over here. Okay, so this is just a revision of what we have just done. So basically, uh, first of all, two questions. Question one, uh, which of the following situations will the server map entries be generated? I, net notepad is configured. B, net server mapping is configured. C, ASPF is configured. And D, persistent connection is configured. So um, if you remember just now, server map entry will only uh, be generated under four scenario. Our net notepad, our net server mapping, our ASPF, as well as our stun protocol. So therefore, the answer will be A, B, and C. While persistent connection is actually just meant to uh, make the session aging time longer. So it's actually nothing to do with the server map. Okay, then question two. A firewall has four default security zones and the security level of the zone cannot be changed. Now, we can actually create a security zones by ourselves. For the security zone that we created by the user, we call it as user defined zones. And this particular uh, user defined zone, we can change the security level to determine the trustworthy of the zone. However, for the original security zones, we basically cannot change. So the answer will be A. So summary, we actually already see the uh, basic principle of our firewall packet filterings, as well as the firewall forwardings. Then we also able to see the uh, configurations of the uh, firewall that using various parameters, as well as the uh, optional features that we can actually enable in the firewall security policy. So that's our topics for introductions to firewall.